Hello, everybody, and welcome to Virtual Bourbon. My name is Steve Akeley. We have a fun event tonight. We're going to be tasting some experiments. We had a team go out to Woodhead Spirits and uh, taste through uh, many, many uh, experiments, and we kind of whittled these down to kind of the greatest hits of the experiments. We thought this would be the ones we would introduce to the group, and uh, it was really a fun process, and we are enjoying going to be presenting these to you today. Uh, in addition to me, we'll have a, a cameo here by Jessica, Jessica Fullerton here. She'll she'll jump in from time to time, right, Jessica? I will indeed. As yeah, needed. As needed. Days. And of course, the star of the evening is Mr. Gary Heingartner. Hey, Gary, how you doing, buddy? Hey, oh, all right. Yeah, good to, good to be here. Yeah, good to be here. About the star. The star. I, I, heck yeah. <laughs> are you kidding? Are you kidding? I got so. extra plumage tonight, though. So, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So, Gary, when uh, this uh, this idea was yours, I mean, you called me and uh, said, "Hey, I've got these experiments, and you know, some of them, you know, maybe uh, destined to be in the gift shop, and uh, some of them, I don't know that we'll do anything with. Uh, you know, do you guys would you be interested in, in tasting these, and, and may, we can do some sort of event?" And uh, so you kind of kicked this thing off. Then Jessica and I went back and forth a little bit on what this might look like. We came up with this idea of three separate sessions. There'll be a part three coming up in July where we'll go out there and, and tap back into the, the experiments and have a barbecue and go out in the, the field and talk about corn, all that kind of cool stuff. I know several people that are on today's session will be at that. Uh, it's going to be a fun event. But, uh, you know, coming up with this idea, what, what inspired you to do this? Well, you know, it's, it's, it was inventory. Uh -huh. You know, you, we got to we count every one of these barrels, every one of them, you know, and, and what got done and you put it on an Excel spreadsheet, you know, you sort it. There's about 700 of them down there. And then there's a bunch of things that just didn't fit. Right. It was strange. So I put a I put an S beside those and I, and I sorted all the S's out and I thought, wow, this is some pretty cool stuff. And some of this stuff is never going to be on the shelf. Right. It's, you know, we've got a onesies or, or even a half sees or whatever. And I thought it'll be pretty, pretty cool for her to get together and have some friends over and, and start sampling some of this stuff that they're never, she never see on the shelf that are, that are different and pretty damn good on some of them. But yeah, you know, just because you got something cool and nice and your friends say it's good stuff doesn't mean you can go to market with it. You know, yeah. there's just a lot of, uh, but anyway, so that's where it came from. And, and, uh, and you were telling me, Gary, that, that, you know, sometimes when, it, when you're talking about experiments, you come up with an idea and, and there is an official experiment where you want to do, you, you put it in a barrel because you want to try what's going to happen or, or whatever that might be. And then other times you were talking, that's just things that grabbed your attention at the moment, maybe with the, the, you know, like the coffee one you had, you had the, whatever, you, you know, the coffee beans or whatever, you just decide, let's do an experiment with this. It kind of just strikes you at the time. And then you just kind of put it in the barrel and set it aside. And and then because there wasn't any like, hey, I'm doing this because I want to see if this is going to uh, turn into something good. It, you just kind of sometimes forget about them. And they just kind of sit there. Right. Right. You know, yeah. and, and taste is, is not a straight line thing. Right. You know, it goes up and then it comes back down and then hopefully it'll turn around and it'll go back the other direction. And so some of these barrels, we just sit there and we didn't need them that day. And we said, well, just let's let's just see what happens for another year. How about two years? Uh -huh. And you go along about the third year, and you taste it, and boy, it tastes like shit. Uh huh. You know, and then you wait another three years, and hey, this stuff's starting to taste pretty good. You know, and that happens to you know all the distilleries, really. Yeah. I'm kind of amazed that sometimes that people say, "Oh, we found these fifty barrels out here." Well, they knew where the fifty barrels was. They tell the government every thirty days what they got. For Christ's sake, you know, they yeah. it just tasted pretty bad, or it didn't taste good for a long time, and sometimes they turn around and. And so we have some of those situations. We sold all the rest of that stuff four or five years ago. And we got this one hanger on that we flood out here and just let it age for a while to see what would happen. So we got a, a variety of different things here tonight. So yeah. we couldn't bring them all. My God, I mean, when you guys come out here, would you taste 12, 15 different things? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, we just kept going. And then there was yeah. bonus ones. So we had some certain number lined out and then we had like the bonus ones after the fact. It's like, well, we got this more stuff right here. You want to try that? Of course. No one ever said no to tasting. Right. Uh -huh. You guys kind of help select which one of those ones we're going to do tonight. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. So Gary, and you're talking about one that just keeps getting left behind. Is that is that what happened with the, the eight-year-old? Because how, how, how does that, which is so delicious, and I can't wait. That'll be, I guess, the third one we're trying here. Uh, the one that says the hazmat, the 142.6. 
Uh, how does that happen? You know, because you, know, you always want to sell every barrel you got. Ultimately, most of it evaporates. You know, you have bottled it now. It's what, about 30 bottles or something like that. Not, uh, not a lot left. And, and yeah, how do, how do you keep skipping over one that ultimately that we tried is just fantastic. I can't wait for the group to try that one. I don't know. <laughs> it worked out well here this is what i this is what i love this is this is why we love the the barrel shop because we want to work with all our distiller friends and say hey is there anything that maybe you just got kind of left uh you know aside and and yeah something that's unique and very individual and eight year old i mean you know I, and this is some old so what's the oldest uh, age state of product you've ever released gary uh that'd be eight yeah but you yeah. know you think about it think about it steve these are 15 gallon barrels, some of these, you know. Yeah. yeah. And it's about you got That's a dangerous three and a half game. Yeah. More yeah. wood per gallon. So this yeah. eight year old is really a, about equivalent to about a 28 year old whiskey. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. a six year old is equivalent. And we found that this is pretty true. When we, we've got 15s and 53s right side by side, when we release a, a, a 15 in about two or two and a half years, you know, we're going to wait that 53 gallon barrel sitting beside it. It's going to be five or six. And yeah. we found that that's pretty true. So yeah. you got an eight year old and a 15. That's about it. It's at least a 25 year old whiskey. So that's a little different situation. Most of the time we feel like in a 15, you're, you've got about a maximum out of oak at about three years. And that's when she starts going back the other direction. And, and you don't know if it's going to come out the other side better or worse. Yeah. So, and that's the reason we didn't leave a whole bunch of this stuff there because we didn't know what was going to happen down the road. So, and we yeah. just we just came up with our single barrel cast strength label um, about a year ago too. So, I mean, this bar the barrel, like barrel number, you know, that eight year old barrel was off profile for us for for a standard ribbon S. Mm -hmm. I mean, so it really wasn't something we would blend out at the time, and then kind of just came around to a, a point where we where we could release it. So, yeah, wrong tone. Yeah. And Gary took me to school because I told him exactly what I felt that bottle was worth. And then I said I wanted to buy it for our shop. And then he starts throwing around the quote I gave him uh, as people yeah. tell me that's worth this. I'm like, wait a minute. I was that person. <laughs> for now on, when I'm in there, I'll be like, oh, this bottle of Gary's got to be worth 30 bucks. This is every mm -hmm. bit of 30. Yeah. I, I mean, He's that's... no longer allowed to negotiate prices for our shop. <laughs> <laughs> we have a company policy now. I'm out yes. of all price negotiations from Jeez. this point. <laughs> yeah, I'm banned. Jim's got to, you know, everything goes for Jim. So, yeah. well, you know, we'll make it right to you down the road. No, I know. I, 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 I love, I loved every bit of that, Gary. That was, I loved it. So yeah. And <laughs> it, yeah, it's, and, and Jessica's working hard to create a very cool design for us too. A cool sticker, uh, you know, really high, highlighting the fact it has, but that's going to be, that's going to be big for us. That's going to be on day one. That's going to be kind of like our grand opening uh, highlight. I think, I mean, I can't imagine us again, because we can't really tap into what you would think is allocated bourbon because again, they're not going to sell us highly allocated stuff. We're only buying barrel picks. They'll be like, oh, you got to buy all this other stuff. We'll probably never get stuff like that from the big guys, but that's okay. We're working with our craft friends and finding what they've got. That's unusual and unique and, and very different. So it's, it's a, this is a special offering I think as we'll ever have. We'll have it on day one, which is, incredible so very I think, about see you and jim i think if if we talk about it tonight you may not have had any left by the time you open that store i know <laughs> I, I had a guy i had a guy uh said i heard about this you're talking about this on one of the shows he's like I, i'll take two bottles I'm like, right. I, first of all, we don't have a store uh, yet. <laughs> we're, we're not selling anything. And, uh, and, and we're only getting 30 bottles. I, uh, two would be a pretty significant uh, ask there. So I don't, I don't think it's going to happen. But. but it would be a good omen, though, to yeah, sell out maybe. a product before you open the store. That'd be cool. That would be cool. That would be cool. Sell, right. Steve. Sell. Sell. Yeah. Sell. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Heck, yeah. We'll have uh, people camped out. Michael drive down. He'll be camped out in a little pop tent outside the, the store. It'll be good. Bill you know, I'll tell you there. what, I've got two or three pop tins. Yeah. We'll do we'll yeah. set up a date and we'll, we'll just create a yeah, that. I'll post it on, on Instagram. They, they, they'll be nobody in them, but I'll act like there is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Steve, just to create a buzz, we need to make a whole list of rules for Alex. <laughs> yes. Right. Yeah. 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 No uh, if, you, if, if you leave your chair, yeah, oh, I yeah. I can never have a situation uh, like where there's no chairs because uh, you know at my age and weight you've got to have a chair at some point. So uh, yeah, I, 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 you'd be able to have a chair, but I don't like the idea where you can just set it up and leave, go home, take a nap. No, that, that wouldn't happen. 
but yeah, we'll see. Uh, Gary, let's start with our first one on the list here. This is the Orange Flint, 100% orange co uh, corn. Uh, current proof is 119.3. What can you tell us about this one uh, before we dig into it? And uh, everybody, if you don't mind, go ahead and pour that one if you haven't done so already. We'll, well talk about if, it in a second. the thing about it is, is, you know, we, we breed corn and mm -hmm. we've been doing this for a while. And when I was in Guadalajara, Mexico, I kept seeing these fantastic ears that just, it's the most beautiful corn ever. And I thought, what's the, what's the deal with this corn guys? And they said, oh, well, that's that's orange flint. You know, we be, 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 breed that for the rest of the world, but there's none for North America. We don't sell any of that in North America, but we sell it in all six other continents. I thought, what's the deal here, you know? But in this country, we have one stream of corn, it's called number two yellow dent. And if you try to get into that stream, they're going to call it foreign matter or not by you're off spec. So that even the corn breeders don't even try to breed something that won't fit into that stream, which kind of locks us out of a lot of corns the rest of the world has. And I thought, wow, what do we take to get some of that? And they said, well, Gary, there's nothing going to be even close to what you can grow in Missouri. And so we talked about it for a while and it really intrigued me. It's kind of like, Todd Leopold last night, we were talking about that. He looked mm -hmm. at somebody else and why he, they did it and why they hung on to something and said there's a really good reason for that. And so when it, somebody tells me they use it all around the rest of the world, but not here, it got me intrigued. I said, well, what would it cost me to get your best guess? So we settled on a, on a price and a $250 bourbon would be a cheap price. Anyway, we, we gathered uh, some numbers and I said, send me your four best guesses. And this was last year. So we planted their four best guesses and one of them didn't mature until the, we harvested on December the 8th and it was still 20% moisture. You know, that ain't gonna grow here. So right. we had two that were kind of, would, would be, uh, would grow here. So this last year, they come up with 10 different ones based on our first year's research. But the corn whiskey we made in in that first year was, man, it was just totally different. And you make cornbread out of it, and you open that Dutch oven, man, the, the aroma that comes off of that was just something totally different than we'd ever experienced before. The corn whiskey, and I think when you had some people out here one time, they said, don't age it. Gary, just put it in a bottle, and you'll fuck it up. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's where that and, and hey, I thought, okay. I'll tell you how well, it is. Yeah. That's how it is. So yeah. it was fantastic, white dog. And but we didn't put so we put some in a barrel anyway. And this is what it is tonight. We put this okay. in a barrel last year. It's a year old, 119 proof. Okay. It's uh one the grain bill is hundred percent orange flint. Uh So I want to hear what you guys are saying. Yeah, Just, yeah, we'll we'll go through. Yeah, let's uh, yeah, guys, you can open up your mics uh, like we always do. Let's let's go through like we normally do. Uh, talk about what we're getting on the nose, kind of together, and then we'll, we'll even ask everybody individually what uh, what they're getting on the on the taste when we get to the taste part here. No, and I opened the bottle and I poured it, and it was just like it filled my house with the sound, the smell of a a distillery. It's just mm -hmm. so good. Yeah. yeah. I thought it was like a melted dream sickle. Melted dream sickle, okay. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I got that particularly on the on the uh, the new make version of it when I unaged. It was dream sickle with white pepper spice, but yeah, yeah. Let's go old school St. Louis orange Julius. The orange Julius. <laughs> there you go. Oh yeah. Mm hmm. To me, it went a little more marmalade. Marmalade. But it's got that darker kind of, you know. Kind of, it just uh, has a different kind of nose than we're used but to. But isn't it crazy how orange flight smells orange or tastes? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's orange to it. Kind of orange and uh, butter, though, like uh, orange orange uh, marmalade on your toast if you, if you do butter and the marmalade. That's good. That's good. All right, let's try this thing. Let's see what we got here. First one of the night. Cheers, gang. It's the damn dark. really nice i mean 
So that's, it's in a 15 gallon barrel. Mm -hmm. The heavy toast is out of a chinka pin of white oak instead of a regular white. And so your, your aromatics are coming from your tannins there. The wood set out for, I don't know how long this wood set out, but it was a minimum of three years. So your water soluble tannins are worst out. So you're going to get yeah. a lot of your floral notes coming through there from the barrel that weren't in the corn and then starting to come out. So this is a one-year-old whiskey, which would be equal to about a three and a half years in a 53 gallon barrel. So it's it come to me is about right on right on target here. Mm -hmm. How old is that, Gary? What's the age on this? It's a year. <clears throat> so yeah. we so Steve and I, we just tasted this just a year ago then. Yeah. Yes, correct. Yeah, yeah. When you guys are out here. Mm -hmm. It was good. It was good new make. Yeah. 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 Bill keeps wanting me to do it. Even better now, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. White dog. Mm-hmm. It's got a pretty short finish on it. Yeah. That's really smooth finish. Really smooth. But it's got a very long nose. Long nose. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's got awesome. that, it's got a, I mean, for 119 proof, it, it's got a little fire in the front, but it does, it's not around the sides or around the peripheral of your tongue like a yellow dent is. It's more up on the top. Yeah. Yeah. So, a little on your tip. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. So when Ryan and I are typically picking, picking barrels, we always talk in, in talking shapes and where it hits on the palate's less, less so, uh, Flavor profile, which is interesting, you know, mm -hmm. different for me. But then it's real, it's real short, don't you think, Jessica? It was just say, I'm sorry, just say it was sharp. It's short. Short, short. short. I was gonna say I don't think it's sharp, uh -huh. but it is. Yeah, a, it's yeah, real it's short. It, it, yeah, it's it's it is a short finish, but I would say in a, in a in a less buttery kind of um, blue corn kind of way. Blue corn tends to sit a little bit more up front like that, and then it just kind of goes away at the mid palate, and that's kind of where I'm getting from that. Yeah, it kind of hangs there for a while, but it's not on the rear back. It's not like no. the red corn that hangs in the rear back with spikes. No, right. It hangs up front. It's actually on top and hanging on top there to me. Yeah, me too. Kind of so starts the front. Good. It's a very light hug. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't yeah. have a goes straight dig back and it stops. Yeah, stops. Yeah, but it does that little little warm little glow kind of sticks around. Mm -hmm. uh, for a little while so yeah uh, again 119 proof that's a that's a pretty bold proof and uh yeah it doesn't drink like that that's for sure never guess it yeah i mean that's only a year old too in a 15 gallon barrel so i mean it's drinking pretty, yeah. pretty easy yeah so i don't think we screwed it up too bad so far <laughs> no no you're doing good you're doing good so we, far, anyway, ready for a one year anniversary steve what's that that should be ready just in time for a one year anniversary yes that's perfect that's perfect oh yeah there you go yeah We'll go sign her name to that barrel next time we're out there. <laughs> I'll, be I'll be your first customer. All right, Danny's in. Danny's in. Uh, Mitchell's, what do you think there? We gotta get Sally's uh, take because she's she'll just tell As you. As usual, it's a split. It's a split decision. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's hear what we got. Uh, I I liked it, and especially for one nineteen, it's yeah. it's not hot, right? Uh, and it's very smooth hate using that word but uh and and the link uh, the lingering is almost more like vapors than like i said yeah. what, what you get from 120 proof yeah that was very good mm -hmm. all right uh, well, we'll i like we'll, it uh, we'll stop talking to the mitchells now no no go ahead Sally. we want to hear what you have to say we want to hear what you have to say let's let's hear it uh <laughs> she her, her dinner may have we didn't eat until about 7 35 <laughs> yeah no I, I think i'm gonna uh hold off on this i actually didn't take a sip after i nosed okay. it okay. um so i'm gonna well yeah you should hold crash on. here with some okay lower proof regular sort of regular stuff and and uh there's get no primed. Get primed not here i mean i have to go over <laughs> to the shelf and get okay yeah. all right i love corn whiskey though so yeah yeah me too i'm excited about this one paul how about you man I think it's great. Uh, mm -hmm. Mouthfields would stand up to me. It's, uh, I mean, it just completely coats the whole palette. Yeah. yeah. What about uh, Team Ewalds? Where are we at on this one? I think uh, right now I'm just experiencing the uh, the aftertaste, and it's like a caramel corn. 
Mm -hmm. You know, I get. Yeah. Uh, That's where I just uh, told Sal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I don't know. Dave, what do you? I, I got a, immediately, I got a little bit of nuttiness, some astringency due to like either tannic kind of a feel or, uh, or some nuttiness to it. That's what hit me okay. initially. Gotcha. Well, Mr. Evan? Yes. Uh, like I'm picturing in my head, like the last time I feel like I had a similar sensation was like having Nashville hot chicken and waffles okay where it's delicious where, yeah where it's more like nashville hot so like that oily it's not like a uh just like a hot sauce or anything right it's more of like they make it in oil and but it leans more towards if you guys have ever tried mike's hot honey mm -hmm. yeah I, i'm almost imagining like mike's hot honey on chicken and waffles and like that's kind of like the <laughs> sensation i'm getting uh, on a Tuesday uh, in the afternoon. Right. Yes. Yeah, I agree. Drinking an yeah. orange Julius, apparently. Yeah. What I had to take you. I take you on the journey. Yeah. Uh, it it was it was brunching, so mm. it was it was about one ish in the afternoon. Okay. A couple more I want to ask, uh, Mr. Bill. Well, it's uh, awesome. Oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Woo. I like it. He scared me. He scared me. Uh, last but not least, I, I don't, we haven't heard from Mike. Mike, what are your thoughts? Uh, it, this is it's great. <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. This is it, it feels like like a wood hat whiskey. And yeah. I was writing down all the notes on the nose and everything. And when Jim said orange Julius, I was like, damn it, that's it on the nose. Yeah. But the taste I'm getting like if you've ever made your own uh, uh, your own version of Cracker Jacks. Yeah. And yeah. and you have it when like you maybe maybe because you know because you're fat you you taste it too soon and it's hot and you get a couple of hot spots in there it was like all that was like a little bit of hot caramel some nuts and everything okay. on there it was yeah it's, it was really good it's really good. it's really good whiskey okay great all right we'll put that one aside we can come back and uh, you know as we as we go through these but uh we'll put that one aside for now and talk about the uh six-year-old bloody butcher red tell us tell us about that one gary well this is one of those things when we uh we made this whiskey, I grew the corn in, in 15. Yeah. And we made whiskey out of it in 16. And then we sent it to ADI in 18. And in 18, we got the best whiskey in, in the United States award on it at ADI. Yeah. And we thought, well, it's pretty damn good at two years. I wonder what yeah. happens if you just take that one barrel and leave it back to three. Well, that three years ended up being six or eight, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah it's a six year. Six year. Yeah, yeah, six years. And we just, at the end of three years, we thought, well, what if we just leave it another year? Yeah. And well, so, it's dark. It is dark, my friend. Yeah. And it's a 15 gallon barrel. So, you know, at six years, three and a half times 16 is what, 21? Yeah. Something like that. So it, it kind of looks like a, a 21 year old whiskey, actually. Mm -hmm. But we just never did anything with it. And now we're out of spec. Like what Jessica said, you know, we can't, all of our other stuff is newer and it's not going to meet that. So we can't really blend it in. And we do at this point, you know, we're, we're taking castrate, bloody butcher. And we're writing the barrel number on the jar. So it's not going to fit in there. So we don't have a jar. It doesn't, it's out of sync all of a sudden, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, and we still have a certain profile, right? Yeah. The butcher, so doesn't quite meet it yeah this one um i mean it's kind of a combination of cracker jack fresh linen and cherries there's a there's a combo for you name your second favorite cracker jack fresh linen and cherries bourbon <laughs> what's everybody else getting on the nose on this one it almost uh smells to me like a dark fruit brandy it's just uh -huh. really rich yeah yeah yeah, that color is intoxicating. When you said lemon, I don't know that I've ever smelled lemon on a whiskey before. It is, it's all like orange rind or lemon rind, lemon zest. Mm -hmm. It's not like lemon the juice. So, yeah. I'm getting like a lemon curd um, lemon smell curd. off of it. Okay. okay. Anything else? Uh, what are those cookies that are, they're like circus cookies that are coated with like oh, a yeah. cherry frosting? 
Yeah. The little animal cracker cookies with the frosting on them. Yeah. With, with the frosted, yeah. That's superior uh, animal cracker cookies or circus <laughs> cookies, whatever they are. I don't know. The only thing I let my granddaughter eat. That's what she likes. That's what I like. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, then you're buying them for her. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. That's good. All right. Let's, t- let's taste it. Let's see what we got here, gang. Let's check it out. How about that mouthfeel? Dang, that's kind of, I mean, you talk about coat in your mouth. That's, that's almost like syrup and a man. That is fantastic. Grab the pancakes. 132.4. No way. Your hydrometer is it. broken. It's every part of the palate. There's no hole. Yeah. It's far yeah. back center. It's, it, it hits everything. How do you call it? Viscous. <clears throat> the mouth feels fantastic, but there is no holes in that one at all. Yeah. Wowzers. Yeah, it's got a little bit of that spiciness in the back, but not as much as the younger red whiskey. No, I would say that this moved a little bit more forward and like this. Yeah, I don't think it's not quite maple syrup, but there's like a nutty quality to it. If you could do like a, which means just I mean, I, and I do still get that in younger barrels that that almond almond butter kind of note, but this is definitely a little more. It it kind of came out like, like a, a barrel aged kind of a note syrup. Like a barrel aged syrup, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I put this on some yes, cranberry. I agree with that. Yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting. It's a pretty good whiskey. I mm-hmm. mean, if you put it all together, you just think, but damn, waiting six years for it. Right. I would never guess this is 132 proof. No. No. It doesn't suck. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Jim, Jim, I, I like your analogy. It just, it, it like it seeks out every part of your tongue and mouth it just just goes until it hits everything that, that, that's what i look for i mean i love when i find a, a bourbon that hits all points so there's no yeah. home that it's mm-hmm. fantastic yeah. kind of reminds me i used to i, I uh, do candied pecans and i'll do maple syrup and cinnamon on there and it kind of reminds me of a, a candied pecan that i accidentally left in my oven a little too long it got a little extra toasty but it is kind of like more praline like yeah yeah Reminds me of Cherry Kringle. Mm-hmm. There you go. That's good. It's quite good. Danny, what do you think? Very, very good. I'd love to have both of these bottles. Okay. Sign Gary up for a bottle of each. Jessica, yes. put them down. He'll be by tomorrow to pick those up. <laughs> 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 Kathy, what are you thinking? I, I definitely get that candy pecan mm-hmm. and the cherry on the um, on the taste and and uh, Jim really nailed it with the it just fills that mouthfeel is incredible it's hanging on the glass really good I would pour this on my ice cream yeah I would put it on my pancakes <laughs> yeah yeah kind of or in feel. a glass so yeah. yeah this is good stuff. Team Robinson. This is good stuff. I, it's syrupy and rich and, you know, dark fruit and wow, really good. I'm Wait. with Kathy. I just want to want to pour it on some pancakes. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the mouthfeel. Unbelievable. All right. Uh, we need to have mix- a breakfast pairing. The breakfast pairing. Yes. <laughs> uh, that's in the works, right? <laughs> Jim and I are talking about that. We happen to at our places by a Dunkin' Donuts. We're like, we got to do some breakfast and bourbon to us events. So, yeah, maybe we'll get this one for that. Uh, T. Mitchell, what's going on there? Uh, yes to all of the above. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. I have nothing to add. Okay. It's delicious. Mm-hmm. Yep. Very good. Win and Sally over slowly. Uh, by the end of this thing, especially if we keep serving up the 132s and 142s. Okay. Yeah, she'll be a big fan here. It is going to be, we'll get a big endorsement. Well, I'll make sure I leave the recorder going during that. Yeah. Paul, <laughs> how about, Paul, how about you, man? <laughs> this is great. The mouthfeel again is perfect on this one. Um, I guarantee put a piece of ice in here and it's a maple old fashioned. That's what yeah. it tastes like to me. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, we heard from Dave, I, but uh, Adina, what, what are your thoughts? Oh, I got like cherry syrup and and uh 
candy pecans and I, I had exactly the same thought, Paula. It was one of the first things I said. I'd love to make an old fashioned with this. Yeah. 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 Having just gotten back from New Orleans, I've got a praline here. So I just took a bite of praline and took a drink of this. Oh, and... perfect. Yeah. That's killer. I would guess. Oh, yeah. Killer. Yeah. There you go. It's kind of rude to, to say oh. that in front of everyone. I'm sorry. I didn't bring enough for every, <laughs> every time. Next time, next time, uh, next time you got to send everyone, and then, then you can do all that you want. I'm sharing with my wife, but that's all I got. Okay. All right. All right. Heidi, uh, any any words from you? No, just at the beginning, I the first taste, I was like, ooh, let's pour this over some cranberry pancakes. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. What are your thoughts on this one, Mike? uh yeah like what everyone else said this this is it, it is if there's a breakfast whiskey i want to have this with chicken and waffles yeah <laughs> oh yeah Heck yeah man oh yeah got, got you thinking hey, about those chicken and waffles <laughs> maybe that's yeah. the brand name of this one yeah chicken and waffles whiskey yeah, yeah. oh that's, that's good see I, I think this would be a good dessert bourbon yeah Absolutely. oh yeah like at uh, bourbon's bistro you get the bread pudding in this oh no oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> Yeah, it's a buckle. Yeah, that's good stuff. Yeah. You know, you notice how long it's lingered in your mouth. Oh yeah. I noticed that, that. Man, I did that ten minutes ago, and it's still just it's right present. It's just hanging in there forever. Yeah. yeah. It it reminds me of. Uh, have you guys ever used the? Um, it's like a gum numbing liquid, uh, like uh, ambasol. <laughs> yeah, ambasol. The the way it makes your gums at, like go numb after uh -huh. a little while, like it, it's weird. It's kind of just sitting there along the gum line. Like I could still feel it. Carry it with you. It's medicine then at that point. You can take it with you. A little flask. It's for my gums. You just prescribe yeah. that. It's for That's my right. gums. What are you going to do? You can't do anything to me. It's for my gums. <laughs> All right. Last hurt. but not, not, yeah, not least, let's, uh, let's ask Mr. Bill there what he thinks. <clears throat> Every now and then Donna will make some uh, pancakes and some some of the butter gets like extra brown and you pour the syrup on there and that extra brown butter and oh yeah pretty awesome anyway this reminds me of that there you go there you go all right let's move on to the next one our eight-year-old blue corn bourbon this is the hazmat uh, looks like the mash bill is 75% blue corn, 25% wheat, and it comes in at a stout 142.6. Tell us about this one, Gary. Well, that's it. This is another one where we said, well, let's just push it and leave it out there a little bit longer and see what happens. And this barrel 30, in, in the very beginning, you know, I put it in there in January of 14, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And uh, we used out of it. And, uh, but then, then it's got, you know, what do you do with the rest of it? You can't blend it with something else. And that's one of the difficult things about a distillery. When you're starting out, you can't have everything out there, but you really need con some consistency with what you're producing, uh, regardless of what it is. And, and we just kind of left it out there. And the longer we left it, it, it just got better. And then we kind of forgot about it. And then we went back and tasted it a couple of years later in it tasted like shit really i mean mm -hmm. it didn't taste good it was not oh crap just leave that out so we didn't even didn't even touch it for i don't know maybe three years i don't kind of forgot forgot about it and then out of uh kind of a dare well, let's go back and taste barrel 30 just for the hell of it today and see what's happened you know it's raining or the tires broke down and we got to fix something and crawl under something greasy and whatever we need an excuse. Okay, it's time to taste barrel 30. And this is a couple years ago. And it's like, wow. You know, this just been sitting here getting better and better all of a sudden. So uh, it started taking our notice. But now it's been out there so many years. And we've taken some out of it. It's only half a barrel left. Mm -hmm. And when you got a half of 15, you haven't got much. And so the surface area of the whiskey in that barrel is major so the oxidation's out there so you got all the makings of a major estro you know est uh, and not, uh, uh, estrification 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 yeah 
so that's going on out there more so than we've ever had in a barrel that was you know fill up to the thumb we we use a rule, rule of thumb when we fill barrels if we stick your <laughs> thumb in if it touches it then it's then it's full enough so yeah. this thumb and full. ryan's thumb a little different but yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway it's just like what do we do with this thing now you know right uh and so we thought we call Steve Akeley. That's what we'll do. There you this go. I'm like Ghostbusters. Yeah. Well. Yeah. So anyway, this is what we got. Okay. Okay. So here's where we're at. 142.6 proof. Our biggest uh, proof of the night qualifies as hazmat. Let's uh, let's talk about it. What are, we, what are we getting on the nose, folks? I was wondering if Gary could hold that bottle back up because and just look at the color of it in the bottle. It looks like coffee in there. It, it I was going to say, it looks like cold brew coffee, but when you put yeah. that barrel, you cannot, in the bottle itself, you really can't see through it. I no. mean, it is. No, you, no, you, it's, it's, it's well, let me, uh, I mean, do you see? Yeah. That, that's what it looks like. <laughs> that's pretty true. Yeah. Well, yeah. The crazy yeah. thing here is, you know, as high proof it is, as it is, it's not blowing off ethanol. I get yeah. my nose right in there and it's not right. burning me and this, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, Jessica, as soon as I poured it, I went, oh, that's uh -huh. nice. I would not say this is high proof from the nose. I mean, it's no. crazy. That's what yeah. a said. I don't know what it looks like. Yeah, that's wow. crazy. That's that's dark, Gary. We can't even see it. Put it right there. You can't even see it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Oh. Crazy. Black and blue. Yeah. Look like an x ray. <laughs> Actually, he held it in front of his face. Yeah. What are we thinking on the nose? Anybody? I mean, brown butter. Brown butter. Yeah. There's a lot going on there. Mm -hmm. Something very sweet. Yeah, I was thinking, uh, mm -hmm. like raisin cinnamon bread. Yeah. Yeah. You get the cinnamon. I mean, I initially, uh, it's like that clove. I always say cola. When I when I smell cola, I, it's really but i kind of got that off it okay. yeah. dark cherry yeah if definitely. love had a scent, <laughs> scent. it's definitely uh, heavy on the dark I fruits i mean i think you could pick out any of the dark fruits I'm right here in there. i am right here <laughs> <That's Yeah. cool. laughs> all right let's try it here we go here we go wow I mean, the mouthfeel on this whiskey is, it's like a cordial almost. I mean, and, yeah. and it, it's a nice, warm, uh, you know, gentle uh, finish, but not harsh at all. I mean, crazy. 142.6, there's no way you're guessing anywhere near that. No. It's actually smoother than the last 132. Yeah. Jessica, you just said cola, didn't you? I did, yeah. That's kind of my first first like, thought. And then it went away pretty immediately was a cola note. Man, but the taste is like a blackberry cola. Blackberry like, don't cola. see that. I mean, originally I, I got cigar, like cigar. Like like licking like the inside of a human. I mean a cigar. Cigar <laughs> tobacco. tobacco. Mm -hmm. I was trying to decide if it was it was cigar smoke or just like fresh tobacco. Fresh tobacco, yeah. No, it sounds like a cigar. Yeah. yeah, I'd say fresh yeah. cigar. Yeah. yeah, more so than it's smoking like, it. Yeah, yeah, it's like if you walked into a tobacco bar and while it's still hanging. Yeah. yeah, just like walking right, like I said, humidor, just all that brushed tobacco, the cigars. Yeah. You know. mm -hmm. it, it's kind of like that smell when you've been riding all day on a good saddle, and you take it off. <laughs> And that yeah. saddle blanket, you know, you're you just, or especially if you're going to camp out on a saddle, and you lay your head on that saddle that you've been riding all day, it's got aromas that come around the back of your head. I was going to say, how many people have experienced that though? It smells like Gary. Smells like Gary. Smells like Gary. Yeah, yeah. I'm going the saddle all day. And the, the pungency yeah. of the, the, the smell, Gary. The campfire. The campfire. Go home and put away a wet barrel. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I I did get on my, hard. I did get on a horse one time on Thursday and rode him through su or Sunday and get and rode it through the next Thursday. Uh -huh. I know that smell. It, I, I did too. I had horses. Just, uh, but I would I, I wouldn't equate that right with being good. I, I don't know. No. no. 
I, I Gary, <laughs> Gary, I'm not arguing with you. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> isn't it in that 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 saddle that wet sweaty kind of leathery aroma that comes off i think of that. that if i had i experienced that then sure maybe i could yeah, like yeah. The leather, so, maybe, leather. wet leather minus the ass but not the ass smell the saddle blanket sweat <laughs> you know no i'm out on that but the, the leather saddle okay <laughs> yeah it's just warmed up, just a warmed up. <laughs> just imagine that rodeo rider getting off that horse oh, and jumping man. right into the shower. It's just wet and steamy. Oh, it smells like Evan it smells died. like the, it smells like the chaps of a champion cowboy. There you go. Yeah, it's taking a weird turn. <laughs> I don't know what's happened here. It makes you feel like you're floating. But it's Evan. Yeah, yeah. Found it good when Gary was saying it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> kind of turned pervy. I gotta change that. Gotta yeah, make it weird. Turned into a yes. bunch of fan fiction or something. Yeah, yeah. Kind of change the hat now. There you go. There you go. All right, there, go. there we go. There, we that's that's a about the horse again. <laughs> yeah, it kind of tastes amaro like to me. If you've ever had some of the herbal amaros, mm -hmm. yeah. like a yeah, like a dark dark amaro, it's got that kind of a character to it. Yeah, I could yeah. see that. Yeah, well, you got to be careful with this one as you're drinking it, yeah. because there's be nothing stopping you from doing a pour after yeah. a pour, and you got to be yeah. one forty two point six. You don't want to play around with that. Yeah, this is the fall off the sidewalk pour. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. fall, fall off, the off the floor. Yeah, <laughs> that's, fall off that's, the side and take. Don't even make it out of the you studio tonight. Yeah, I'll yeah. 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 just sleep up here tonight in the studio. Yeah, you know the thing that the lingering effect. See, this is a, it, it didn't linger like the last one. Mm -hmm. You know, that blue corn uh, didn't stick with you as long. Yeah. yeah. And so to me, I think you can, with the blue corn, I've always said you can just sip it all afternoon and not get drunk and realize that you've got to go upstairs on all fours. Right. You know, <laughs> all of a sudden. But then the next day you just go right to work. I mean, it's, this is sacrifice today. Right. But this is is just like that. Even at that high concentration, the the mouthfeel is not lingering. Not like the red corn. Yeah. And, and it's not like the orange either. It's still pretty short. Yeah. But intense in the middle. You know, just really nice in the middle. But it it's not hanging around for tomorrow. Yeah. Let Not me check in a, with a couple of folks that uh, we hadn't heard from. So, Mike, I'll start with you, man. What are your What are your thoughts on this one? Um, well, three for three. I I want to drive to New Florence and go buy these. So, um, yeah. Gary just makes some of the best bourbon around, and this is this is this is great. It's sneaky. It's great. I like it a lot. Yeah. Well, tell them where you can get that, Steve. <laughs> you can get that at our store in Arnold, Missouri. <laughs> Yeah, keep coming into the city and uh, yeah, just head a little south and uh, right into Arnold, right on Jeffco Boulevard. There, there we are. Uh, you'll see Jim out there spinning one of those signs. You'll know to, yeah. what, when to pull in the parking lot. That's the plan for Jim. So. In bottle shape. Yeah. Yeah. In a bottle shape. Yeah, that'd be cool. <laughs> Paul, what, what do you think, man? Yeah, another great one. This uh, for me, it's like, yeah, it starts like cherry cordial, like it's chocolate. Yeah. And, like, yeah, there's, cho there's definitely chocolate. There's definitely chocolate. Dark yeah. chocolate. Yeah. But then that that cigar, that tobacco comes in on the finish, and it's—I mean—it just pairs so nicely with that chocolate cherry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Mitchells, check in with the Mitchells, Team Mitchell. I was going to say cherry cordial. Also, <clears throat> I actually have a rye downstairs named cherry cordial, and but this is so much more than that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sal, what do you think? Uh, yeah, I agree with the uh, black cherry soda. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I was uh, uh, on uh, our YouTube channel today and uh, clicked on one of our videos, and it was at the point uh, I'd left and then came back. And it was a point you walk on, you're wearing like a slanket or something like that. You have one of those, or yeah, yeah they were yeah. Come cruising okay. under the screen. It was like, yeah, that's yeah, there you go. I guess that's it. Yeah. You come walking on, and there, there's like a, a saddle and a slanket sits down. <laughs> like, yeah. It's a blanket with arms and a yeah. front. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. I think it's colder in our house today than, than it was outside. So, yeah, that happens at this time of the year, right? Sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Danny, what do you think? 
I, I, I like it very well. I mean, like I said, you know, I do agree with the cherries, chocolate. I mean, just, just you know you're getting some of Gary's good stuff when you're drinking it. Yeah, we'll see you on grand opening then. Oh, we'll see you there. Yep. Uh, last but not least, let's ask uh, Kathy here. I haven't heard really from her checking in on this one. So definitely the, the dark cherry cola and then finishes with the tobacco. I love that Jessica's here to help me with my tasting notes because mm -hmm. she nails it. And um, the heat goes just straight down the middle, but you still get a little hug. Oh, yeah. So it's it's very friendly, but I don't think it's as friendly as Evan was making it out to be. <laughs> Evan got a little dirty with it, whereas this one, I you know, this this cowboy isn't a nasty cowboy. <laughs> All right. He's just a hard working man. Okay, let's talk about our next one, Gary. It's a honey barrel finished red corn bourbon. So 75% corn, 25% wheat finished in a honey barrel and is currently 113.8 proof. What else do we need to know about this one? Well, you need to know that we've never been there before. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what exciting is what we're doing tonight is uh, trying stuff that we've never done before. And we've never sold before. It's never been on the shelf before. May never make it. And one of the reasons that it may make it or not make it is what you guys tell us tonight. Is this something we're looking forward to hearing some other people okay. and say, hey, go forward, Gary, or pack it up, man. Put it in the back closet, you know? Okay. That's interesting. So we had a, let's see, what was this? Uh, this is a red corn bourbon barrel. And then we took it out and... Uh, so this is a bloody dapper was okay. in that barrel. We took yeah. it, made bloody dapper out of it. Then we fill it full of local honey and let it set for uh, about three months. And, and that's not really significant one way or the other. And then we dumped the honey out. We sold that for a piss load of honey. And then we <laughs> the whiskey back in it. And we hope uh -huh. to sell the whiskey with uh -huh. the like amount of money is what we'd like to do. But we, we don't know, never been here before. So this is our first time we've had other people other than us in the distillery tasting okay. this thing. And we're, we're really looking forward to what you guys can what tell our, us. Our feedback is, okay. I will say this. Uh, so Jim asked what color we want to paint the store. I said bourbon color. And he's like, well, what color is bourbon? Huh? Well, there you go, Jim. Here's your answer right here in this glass. That's, that's bourbon right <laughs> that's there. That's pretty classic, yeah. That's, that's, that's the color I like. So it's, you know. Amber, it's dark paint, amber. It's hard to paint something like a translucent amber, though. Yeah. That's where if they like backlight the wall. No, no, you got this, Jim. You're good. We'll see okay. how good you are. We'll see. We'll see how good you are. I like that. Take a picture of that and let's take that in the paint store and they'll, they'll fix you all up. They'll be like, yep, yeah, we can do that. That's your job, Steve. I'll be, I'll be in there building a bar. <laughs> all right. Let's talk about this one on the nose. What do we got here? Maple. Lots maple. of maple. Lots of golden, grams. golden oh. grams. I went saltwater taffy. I went totally different direction. Saltwater taffy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Golden grams, I get, but there's no honey. Yeah, golden so, grams. Yeah, I'm like honey grams. Yeah. Honey golden grams. Gram. Sugar grams. Honey toast. I believe those are called honey smacks. <laughs> honey smacks. <laughs> honey oh. smacks. Yeah. Evan is Taylor not home. And she is. Oh, okay. You just seemed a little lonely tonight. <laughs> Isn't that what Will Smith on the other side? Rock, a little honey smack. Honey smack. Wow. Uh, boom. I'm getting a little vanilla off of this too. A little vanilla, yeah. As it's yeah, I mean, it's maybe like pulling it away from your nose, it just kind of like wafts up a little bit of vanilla extract. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like honey on toast. Honey on toast, yeah. yeah. All right, let's taste it. A lot going on there on the nose. Let's see if uh, taste lives up to that. So let's see what we got. That's different. Yeah. That's dessert. That's that is good. good. It's uh, nice and sweet up front, kind of yields to a nice caramel middle and finishes out nice. Wow. Yeah. Wow. The palate yeah. is not the nose, but they're both great and yeah. so smooth and just coats your mouth. I was going to say, it coats yeah. your lips so much. You almost got like that, that honey res yeah. residue on your lips. Yeah. yeah. Yes. 
Yeah, the cool mouthfeel. The yeah. wow. I, I want that with some cornbread. Like that would be mm-hmm. fantastic. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, honey on cornbread. God, that'd be good. Oh. Yeah, this is like honey cornbread. Yeah. If only we knew someone who was really good at making cornbread. Mm. If only we knew. Yeah. And we were going out to their place to hang out for a day. And well, there's this mm-hmm. butter company that's not far from her, far from us that makes she makes her own fused butter. I think she has done it's a holistic hog and she did a a bourbon bourbon butter. Uh-huh. So do like a bourbon butter with yeah. it on a on the now cornbread. You're talking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She won like a big award for the whole Midwest, didn't she, Jess? I think so. Yeah, she did. She did she did win a won an award at the uh yeah by missouri i think i have no idea what missouri Grove. Like yeah no did, she's did really she, really cool lady did she use your bourbon for that she did she did use oh, one of nice. ours i don't know which one right gary but she did come to us for bourbon that's cool yeah, she, I, I don't remember what bourbon. i don't i don't, I don't, I don't either i just remember her being there and then it was a collaboration yeah that we did and she i think that did win an award too so with that yeah, bourbon butter. I think, but I, I got a, I got a negative note on this one. Okay. You know, I do appreciate all the positive feedback we're getting, but to me, it really cuts the red corn short by yeah. limiting the finish. The mm-hmm. shin- the finish on the red corn, which is so great about red corn, is gone. Well, you know, the spiciness, the rye type thing is is not in there at all. The honey must have just sucked it up. Does. No, it moved it all forward on this. And that's why Ryan and I agree. We were going to keep, we were going to continue doing this, but not with red corn bourbon. We were going to do this with blue corn bourbon because it just kind of falls more in line with that. and just kind of brings out what's good about the blue corn. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we got some blue corn in the barrel too. Okay. But we didn't tonight. We didn't got Heidi, taste. Heidi stepped away, but she's spending all our money. See, she's like, you and Steve need to buy that barrel. Like, that's my favorite so far tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, so we won't do. We probably won't do another red corn bourbon, uh, honey, just uh, just All because right. it's also one of our bloody dappers, one of our newest bash bills, mash, you know, bourbon mashes, and we don't have as so many of the barrels now, to kind saying. of play with. Yeah, yeah. So, I was say, when are, when are you gonna have this bottled? I want some. Yeah. I'll come out there and negotiate with you, Gary. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm working on I'm working on a label for this, so it's in the it's in the works. All right. Try a little water with this one, and it really opens it up. Yeah, just a little really. bit of water. Yeah, that. Fantastic mouthfeel. Mm-hmm. We haven't got a and name it, for it, but one of the th- one of the names that keeps surfacing from different sources is Queen's Reserve. That's yeah, mm-hmm. unofficial. That is a it's what's on the label that I'm currently working is called Queen's Reserve, <clears throat> but still still not set in stone yet. Okay, you're, you're close. Right. The ABV Queen's Reserve sounds better. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, this one's going to be released. Yeah, when I do the label, it's going to be a calf strength as well because I didn't want a cloyingly sweet um, whiskey. I wanted the, the 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 proof of it to kind of cut through. And also because we can't do a true uh, hydrometer reading just off of the whiskey itself. We have to actually kind of treat this like a cordial when we get the proof. We have to do a small distillation because of the really? sugar. The, yeah, because the bricks, the sugar content in it is higher than Okay. Maybe Gary can explain that a little bit better, but it's a uh, it messes it with our that much, from, that much yeah. from the barrel, huh? Wow! It's en- enough that it it throws off of the proof that we couldn't uh, get it to a proper proof with just that method. Like yeah. I said, we would, we would have to. It's got the pleasant sweetness for a perfect, you know, dessert bourbon, but uh, yep. it, it, it's whiskey. I mean, what I hate about these, uh, you know, flavored things is they taste just sweet to be sweet, and this is this tastes like whiskey to me, so. That's that's important. It doesn't lose its identity. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't taste like you're adding honey to it. It tastes right. like it was finished in honey. Yeah. Which you're used. Yeah. Yeah, which, right. yeah. Yeah. What do you think of this one, Mike? Uh it, it it is a little sweet, but I might have to do a special tasting with this and the and the and the other one with chicken and waffles to see which one would actually come. <laughs> okay. Because okay. you got to do some more work. Yeah. yeah. I think yeah, all, it's just for, for science yeah. purposes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I understand. Tough job. Yeah. yeah. Mr. Bill? I like it. He likes it. There you go. <laughs> it is a little on the sweet side, but I like it. Okay. All right. Yeah. Paul, how about you, man? It's good. The finish is, yeah, I mean, it's just all honey. I've had a couple of the other um, distilleries that put out their, you know, allocated honey finish yeah. ones that are several hundred dollars and this blows all of them away in my mind so yeah yeah 
Yeah. You know, it probably be in all honesty, we didn't really uh, know what the proof was when we sent these samples out. And we probably underestimated the proof because yeah, of, like, on, on a hydrometer, what it does is the viscosity of the sugar raises a hydrometer, see, and lowers mm -hmm. the proof. And, and either on a, you know, on a, we got a hydrometer, a quick one that measures yeah. the resistance of vibrations. And, and that one also see, will be, will, if you got honey in there, it will underestimate the proof. So that, that proof we're looking at here is probably 10 below, I'm guessing there. We don't right. really know. That's not That's a good number. Right. No, it's probably not. That's what I'm saying is we need to we need to, to distill it out once and get the proof and then just bottle it up instead of distilling it, proofing it, watering. You know, it's just that it would be a, a, a process that it's not necessary. We could always just send it out cask, which and then people can add water as they want. Um, okay. But yeah, so I mean, we barrel, you know, we didn't proof down the, the bourbon, the barrel, the original barrel entry on the bourbon was probably one. 123 because it's bourbon um so we put 123 proof in the barrel a year ago and it's always huge it typically goes up in a barrel so it doesn't make any sense it would drop down 10 proof unless yeah. it was and there wasn't that much honey in there to the honey to proof it down 10 you know so right right interesting interesting and so it's, it's probably running that 120 i'm guessing in the mid yeah I, range in reality right yeah well this What's is a different barrel? one Oh, I mean, like, so cool. uh, I want to check in with the Mitchells, see what they think. Again, very different uh, than we've had tonight. What do you guys think? Um, my favorite so far, mm -hmm. uh, but I do like sweet. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, your, your, your favorite's coming then. Get ready. <laughs> yeah, it's coming uh, soon. Uh, like, like Paul said, I've, I've had several uh, pretty good honey cask uh, whiskeys. And this one though, the, the residual, like the last thing in your mouth was almost doing the honey in your mouth. Yeah. And, you know, I felt it just all on my tongue. It was, it, it's good. Okay. Uh, I would keep this one. Okay. All right. Dan, and, how about when, hey, hey, Paul, uh, sorry, real quick. When you do your barrel of this, you can do the A and then the B Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> I like that. Yes. Yeah. Now say that again. So we're uh, ABV, but he said use a, a B for replace the letter B with a B. With the honey. Oh, the honey bee. Yeah, ABV. <laughs> I like it. See, this needs to be ours. This needs to be ours. We're gonna. Uh, they they won't allow that. First of all, you know they <laughs> they they are not negotiable people to deal with. Uh huh. <laughs> they, they tell you in bold type. I mean, you have to put the period in the right friggin' place. What about it? What about a sticker on the side? What about a sticker on the side? For your sticker on the side? Yeah. Yeah, a sticker on the side that goes. There we got some leeway. Oh, yeah. That's all we're talking about. We're not talking about a brand name. Yeah. We got that. Yeah. I don't know if you saw Evan's comment in here, too. He had a great name for it The Butcher and the Bee. Yeah. I love that. I wrote that down. Yeah. That's, that's, that's on the yeah. list. I like butcher. If we were using butcher for it, though, we're probably not going to be using butcher for this anymore. We'll see. Okay. Yeah. But it's not bad. Cool. I like the ring of it. I mean, you're not wrong there. But, I mean, when we start fine. using, if we start using blue corn bourbon, may, I don't know. Maybe after this tasting, we'll we'll choose mm -hmm. differently. But yeah, maybe maybe you're coming back around now. Maybe well. we'll come back around. Well, let's hear what Danny has to say. Danny's a fan of what you do, but uh, you know he's not into the flavored things and stuff like that. So we'll see what he says about this. He's he, he's coming in. Let's hear. Let's hear what you got, Danny. Well, everybody knows of a certain brand that I do like myself. And Tumbling they, Dice? No, I'm talking about a big brand and that they've turned around and made a honey version themselves. And I think it's terrible. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But I like what Gary's done here. I mean, okay. Gary, did you, did, did, are these from your hives, the, the same honey barrels that you used for it? Uh, this is what no, I, but one of the one of the drones that I raised, Brad the Queen, that <laughs> made the honeybees <laughs> gathered the horse that made the honey. That's what I, I was going to say. I That's what I, th I was going to say. I thought happened here. I could tell by the taste. <laughs> we we do raise bees, but 
we're not to the point yet where we got enough. I mean, uh, we do this three barrels at a time. That's 45 gallons. Yeah. And, and we didn't have that much yet. We're, we're getting there, but we're not there yet. Okay. Okay. Right. We'll keep an eye out for that. Uh, a couple more. I want to check with the Robinsons, their thoughts on this one. Uh, this is a brunch bourbon. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. I, wow. Um, I just I can't get over the mouthfeel. It's fantastic. Yes, it's sweet. Um, but boy, that's definitely a dangerous porch sipper. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Last but not least, let's, let's check in with KK. KK, what do you got? I think Melanie just nailed it. Uh, porch sipper, sweet. I like finished stuff. So this comes right in there. Okay. Okay. Well, this last one is a, a bonus. A, again, we had done through all the tastings and stuff like that. And then uh, uh, Gary and Jessica were like, hey, we got some cordials out here if you guys want to try that. And we decided to do that. And then when we voted on all the stuff that we tried, we thought, man, we got to include one of these, you know, sweet cordials, especially to, you know, to kind of cap what we're doing. Uh, mm -hmm. Very nice thing. So this was our favorite out of the cordials that we tried. So tell us a little bit about what a tawny uh, berry cordial is, Gary. Well, you know, we got... There's two big streams of alcohol. You got the wine over here and, and you got the uh, grain over here. So if you take a wine and you ferment it, you make, I mean, you take a fruit, you ferment it, and you make a beer. What the hell am I talking? You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a lot of high proof bourbon. Apples. Apples. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, you take grain, you make beer, you take beer and you just sell it and you make bourbon. And then if you take bourbon and then you mix fruit with it, you can create a cordial. And then if you take that cordial and put it in wood, you can create a tawny bourbon or cordial. Okay. So on the on the fruit side, you can take fruit and ferment it. You make wine. You take wine and distill it. You make brandy. And then you can fortify it with your weight grain from your um, the alcohol from your grain. And you put that in a barrel. Then you make a tawny port. So real straightforward. You can kind of this in two different directions. <laughs> So yeah. this is what we did. We made a corn whiskey. We uh, we soaked blackberries and raspberries in it. We made a cordial. And then we took that cordial and put it in a barrel and left it in this situation for, is this four years? We did it in 17 in August. Yeah, yeah, four years it says, yeah. Four years. So that's pretty much unheard of. That's an old, an old European concept, you know, when you age vinegar for 20 years or whatever we're kind of in that we're in that kind of mode so we normally sell the tawny port at a year and this one we just we just made that one barrel we didn't dump it we didn't sell it we just let it sit there so it's sitting there since august the 17th okay and the proof should be 40 okay we don't know yeah we really we were don't just... know don't know on this one either because we would have had right. to have we had yeah we had to do a micro distillation to still it yeah. out from the sugar so yeah uh, but we'll see all so, right let's uh, even though i don't know think you normally do tasting notes with cordials uh let's uh, this is what we know so let's talk about this on the notes yeah. because that's really nice well it has nice. a nose i mean there's yeah, a nose it does there. have a nose yeah yeah, yeah fruity oh, man that's that's good it's nice it's fruity but there's like cocoa chocolate in there uh-huh it's very complex yeah mm -hmm. this is interesting so i mean it's a very like light milk chocolate yeah. yeah yeah all right last one of the night cheers gang let's try this thing cheers, cheers. cheers. Mm -hmm. wow yeah i mean piece of uh, yeah. raspberry cake and you know, that is. wow this is uh no doubt this is a perfect compliment uh, when you're at your dessert course yeah that's very yummy nice. yeah when, when someone tries to ask you to try fruit cake for the first time this is what you hope it tastes like <laughs> it never does. that's a it good does. analogy i really it does that. not it, yeah there you go i i get a lot of strawberry rhubarb pie on this <clears throat> yeah yeah to me this is what this is a cordial for the bourbon drinker okay yeah not for the strawberry soda girl 
Okay. This is yeah. this is a this is a big body. I mean, it's just my God, it's just a mouthful that you can't hardly deal with at one time. Mm-hmm. Look, you did what McNew says not to do, mixing the grapes and the grains. This, yeah. this is good. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I just did something a little crazy. I had a little bit of the uh, six-year bloody butcher in my glass, and I poured a few drops of the cordial in there. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, something, huh? Hey, that's good. It's off the charts. Adina, what could you do with this uh, cocktail-wise? You try just the the, the Tawny Berry Cordial we're, we're drinking here. You can come up with something, couldn't you? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What an ingredient. I think good. just mixing that with the Bloody Butcher and... A little bit of soda. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe a little I'll bit of bubbles. I mean, I, I, it almost feels like, you know, the, the person that would be most excited about it is not only your bartenders, but, you know, your chefs. I mean, I think there's a mm-hmm. lot of flexibility in cooking with this one. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah. You, you go to a bakery and be like, "Hey, check this out." You do uh, all kinds of things with oh, this. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. The honey. I was thinking the honey one would be great with the champagne. Make like a French seventy-five out of that. Mm-hmm. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Nice. I like what you're putting you're down, thinking. Adina. Now you're thinking. All right, we're, let's check it with the Mitchells. Uh, Sal, how do we do here? New favorite. Uh, <laughs> That's I... good. Isn't it? Felt like it was a um, pastry chef uh, yeah. wow. designed uh, devil's food chocolate cake with a real thick raspberry gelatin in between the layers. Yeah, mm. yeah. So let's let's uh, you know, obviously Brad, you know, big into uh, you know, bourbon whiskey and you know, does a lot of barrel picks and all that. What are, what are your thoughts as you try this one again? This isn't our normal uh, something that we'd normally drink, but what are your what are your thoughts as you taste this thing? It's it's uh, I'll use the term elegant. Mm-hmm. Which, yeah. Uh, someone reminded me of that last week. Yeah. Doing something, but um, me. Uh, <laughs> No, <laughs> Brad. The answer was yes. You had she. She set it up for you. Just, yeah, just you just say yes. Sure. Yes. Of course, honey. You should yes. have said yes. <laughs> I always say yes. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Okay. Um, no, it, it's it's great. It's yeah, it's fantastic dessert. Okay. One or uh, or breakfast. Yeah. yeah. Or brunch. Or yeah. yeah. Danny, I, you know, I, I can't imagine you going out and buying a lot of cordials and stuff like that. But uh, as you taste this, as you know, as a classic whiskey fan, what are your thoughts? Well, actually, the last time I was out at Gary's and we did the barbecue thing, he served a dessert to us. Yeah. With it was grilled peaches and ice cream. I'd Ooh. like to see this poured on top of that. Gary, now you got a request in. We're coming out there in July. Get ready. There you go. Yeah. All right. yeah. I just thought of something. You know, I, I gave you the saddle story, but <laughs> it wasn't that popular. <laughs> I knew it. This is the, what popped in my mind is, and, and I'm not mean, I'm not boasting here, but we were in the in Paris one time by the Arc de Trump, and we had this Belgium pastry shop sitting there, and we were eyeing all these pastries and decided, how the hell do we pick one? You know. And all of a sudden, the chef in the back goes out and he grabs some pastry and he walks up to the window and he just dips that in some kind of sauce right in the window. Yeah. And eats it. And I walked right in and I said, I want one of those. Right. They said, well, what? What are you talking about? We don't sell that. I said, but that's what I want. I want what the chef got before he went off work. And, And this to me, we got that. And this is to me, it's got that pastry now, and it's got that, it's got that luscious, whatever he dipped that sauce in. I don't even know what it was, but I yeah. remember that's what popped in my mind when I'm just tasting this. Is that special stuff that you can make in a bakery, you know, and pour over baked goods that just, you know, pudding. There's yeah. a pudding on top of it, pudding on top of pastry. I had a pretty good cannoli yeah. the other day. I'm thinking putting this in cannoli filling. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like you like if you, you could take this and and put it in like that white frosting you put across yes. like uh, uh pipe like on croissants there, yeah. right right well, or, yeah. Or whatever yeah oh yeah like, like, Danny, Danny, Danny don't do that motion ever again on film by the way. <laughs> <laughs> 
So okay. Jim, what do you, what do you think of this? Obviously we've, we've changed our philosophy a little bit. We're the barrel shop now. So this is a barrel aged product. Is this something that we could potentially bring in for, uh, you know, at the right time of the year, maybe. Yeah, for sure. Like, especially some of the, the uh, kind of, you know, classes like the kind of not off the wall, but you know, <sighs> class we're talking about doing that would be different. This yeah. fit into some of those for sure. Um, it's a, it's a dessert drink for me, for sure. I, I it's, I, I loved it. It's great. And it would be, it would pair well with a lot of pastries. It'd be fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Adina and I have a dessert for this. What do you got? All right. Soak angel food cake with this cordial. Okay. And then serve like it with it. fresh berries and either real whipped cream or cream on glaze. Okay. We'll, okay. we'll be over next week. Let yeah. Us know. I, you can't just throw that out there and not, <laughs> yeah. not set a date. We need yeah. to set a date. I just need a bottle of the stuff from Gary that I'll be uh, He'll set you up. Yeah. So Melanie, I went I went the other way with that. I, I just was whispering to Jim and I'm like, we should really pour this over bacon and put it in a broiler. Oh, that would be interesting. Yeah. Oh, like, really? yeah. I, I do like that. So yeah. that but you could crumble fun. that on top of your pastry. pastry. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Get a little savory, a little sweet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's why I love her. Well, yeah. yeah no, I was thinking the same thing. This would this would be a good base for a barbecue sauce. Yeah. Oh, ooh, yes. Yeah. Yes. All right. So it's we're cocktailing over right. here. Yeah. Okay. Right. You can work your numbers right. You could call it a no carb drink. See, because whiskey doesn't have any carbs in it. You could call it a, a whiskey, and therefore you wouldn't add carbs when you put it on your bacon. <laughs> there you go. Put the bacon in it. Is that no carbs too? Okay, perfect. I got it. Got Perfect. It. All right, so we just did a quick cocktail out of this. So <laughs> okay, what do we got here? I went over to grab some uh, grab some hatch gin. It's okay. Wisconsin gin that's made from honey. Okay. So mm -hmm. hatch gin, it's a floral gin. Uh, it's not real junipery. So, and a little bit of the cordial. Oh, Ooh, good baby. Grief. Oh wow! Oh, nice. Oh, now you're works. talking. Yeah. I thought a little bit of gin on this cordial mm -hmm. would be awesome, and it does. Yeah, Mike, you had us going four for four. What about uh, what about this one? Did, did we did we continue on or did we strike out here? Oh yeah, I mean, I never thought I was going to be a cordial person until I had right. had would have pretty cordials. nice and yeah. and uh, <laughs> but this is along with the food stuff. I, maybe maybe for breakfast, but I was thinking some sourdough toast with some really good butter, like Kerrygold butter, or even you know the stuff local to to New Florence. And the, and just having this to sip with while you had that sourdough toast that's buttered. That'd yeah. be it'd be like uh, spread yeah that'd be like spreading a, a, a mixed berry jam on on toast or biscuits. Definitely mm. yeah, absolutely yeah. perfect. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Oh, or eating this with fresh biscuits or drinking this with fresh biscuits. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. That's where I was. Yeah. 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 Kathy, what do you think? I, I think I've got a lot of road trips to make to get some of these yummy foods. I'm <laughs> going to Paul's for barbecue. <laughs> and I'm going to Melody. <laughs> Adina, Come gonna on. make me <laughs> Yeah. Get a cocktail with uh, Dina and Dave. Right? Yeah. 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 And we yeah. can have a progressive bourbon meal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mr. Bill, what do you think of, of this one? It's a little sweet for my taste, but mm. it's it it don't suck. What, would, uh, would, you, would you have uh, Mrs. Bill try this one? Would this be something that she, I know she doesn't like whiskey? Though. Would she try this? So she doesn't like alcohol different. at all. Nothing at all. Okay. No. Not she even open to the idea of trying. It. All right, let her try it. Let's see. Let's bring her oh, on. Smell it. Let's bring her on, Mrs. Bill, as she's known. Her license plate even says so. Let's get a... She says maple okay. syrup. Okay. Are you willing to try that? Donna, can you right. infuse See, that in uh, some angel food cake? Donna's, Donna's maybe trying this here. Wow. She likes Whoa. it. How about well, that? Donna wrote a strict tease for me. So it's, like... already, it's already working. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Bill wants to order a case of this now, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> you hear me smacking my lips? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a lip smacker for sure. It's it's got that uh, yeah that 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 consistency. Uh, last one I want to check in was with Evan. And uh, what are your thoughts, man? Uh, I don't know if there's anything even weird I can give you for this okay. one. It's you don't have to be weird. You can be normal sometimes. Nah. It, <laughs> no, he can't. 
<laughs> it's it's really good. Um, great great way to finish. You know, we had some really strong stuff, and you you sent us out on a, a real sweet note. Yep, absolutely. That was that was the design. <laughs> That was done intentionally. So yeah, we, we, uh, we definitely want to do that. All right. Well, it wouldn't be the ABV network if we weren't having a little fun with this and just see what is the best of the night. So all you have to vote on, there's not any ranking or anything like that. Literally just voting for your favorite. So what is your favorite of the evening? We'll start up there with the legend um, and see what, what was your favorite of the night, Mr. Legend? I think I'm going to say the six year bloody butcher. Okay. Six year bloody butcher. I think you're consistent. I believe when we, uh, when we did the vote at the distillery, that was your favorite at that time too. So that you are consistent, if nothing else. So that's good. All right, Evan, you are next. What is your favorite? I'm going to go, I'm going to go eight year blue. Okay. Eight year blue. All right. All right. Next up is Davey Waltz. I'm just going by what's on my screen. It may not match with what's on your screen, but uh, that's okay. This is oh. Oh, it's, it's really close between the, uh, the six year bloody, but I've got to go with the eight year, eight year. Okay. That one is just unique. All right, Adina. Um, I will go with as far as the unflavored ones, I would go with the six year bloody butcher. Six year bloody butcher, okay. But I loved the honey one and that cordial was off the charts. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. Next up on my screen is Mike. So Mike, you're next. Uh, yeah, it's pretty close, but I, I, I would have to go with the, uh, six year bloody butcher, six year bloody butcher. Okay. Uh, Mr. Bill. Well, I'm, I'm kind of stuck, but, um, uh, I would say, uh, the six year bloody butcher and then my, uh, orange flint. Okay. Hey, you gotta go one. So that's, that's your favorite, the six year bloody butcher, I assume, right? Yeah. Okay. I'm putting that one down. Uh, I'm going to, Donna was almost part of this and uh, because she liked the, I'm going to go, I'm going to throw a vote down for the Tawny Berry because right. you said she normally doesn't like alcohol and she liked that. So that, that's got to be worth a vote. So I'm, I'm, I'm marking her down for that. Uh, next up, we'll, we'll go to uh, Heidi. She's next um, on my screen. Well, my number one was the eight year blue corn, yep. but followed very, very closely by the honey barrel. No, no, no. Okay. We can only take first, so that's uh, we'll, we'll put you down for that. Uh, Jim, you're next. I'm gonna go with the eight year. Eight year, uh, eight year blue corn is spectacular. Everything tonight was great, but yeah, that was uh, over and above. Fun event tonight, yeah. Lots of lots of good stuff. Everything very different too. It's not like everything yeah. is basically the same and a little bit. No, it was all very very different. So fun. All right, Paul, you're next on my screen. Uh, I echo Jim. Um, everything was absolutely phenomenal, but the eight years to me stood out. Okay. Okay. Sally. Uh, if you could put me down the same as Donna. Yep. Uh, uh, that's what okay. I, I, that's good. What I, 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 I do. I didn't want to lock your vote in without at least asking. So I wanted to be fair. I wanted to be fair. All right. Uh, next up is Brad. Uh, again, they were, they were all first place in their own, own way. Um, but I will do the six year. Okay. All right. Uh, Jessica's got hers. I'll put, uh, I'll put right, we're going to ask Gary very last. So Gary, we will ask Gary. Um, uh, Danny, you're next on my screen. Very hard choice. Mm. My two favorites were the eight year and the orange flint. But okay. mm, Kathy's dog is trying to vote. Okay, Danny's doing a final tasting. It's tense. This is a tense moment. <laughs> I'm sweating. Yeah. Danny's not mailing this thing in. He's giving us due diligence. Okay. Cumber vice. <laughs> He's going with the cordial. I don't know. I don't know. Fooled us all. I'll thirsty. go with the eight year. Eight year, even okay. though after I much really thought, like that. Yeah, he, loves, he loves the orange flint. All right. Next up is Melanie on my screen. Um, I have a four way tie. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, Gary, I say go forth with all of these. They're all fabulous. Mm -hmm. um, I'll have to go with the eight year, though, if I have to pick eight only year. one. Okay. If you had to pick one, you got to pick one. All right. Neil, same question for you. 
That, that was my exact my same sentiments. Uh, Gary, these are all ready to go, buddy. Uh, yeah. But I like the the eight year blue. Yeah, yeah. Kathy? All right, if you can get past my dogs barking at me outside. I do really like the six year bloody, but I'm going to give some love to the orange flint. Orange flint, I think it's okay. unique and it's so much fun. So much fun. Okay. I'm, uh, I, I do love all of them. I, I, all great in their own way. Uh, I'm not a very sweet person because I can never imagine myself. How, how, where does this fit in life? You know, because can you, I can't have more than one glass of this. But to me, with the, you bring out a dessert course and one one glass of that, it fits in perfectly. I think there's a lot of applicability and, and baking within that. I, I do like that. But to me, I like that that eight year uh, um, uh, blue corn bourbon. I mean, that's that's my thing. One forty two plus proof, amazing. Gary, we're going to ask you too. It's it's got to be tough for you. These are like your children. I know you you made all these things, but uh, if we had to ask you. What's your favorite of the evening as you're trying these with us? What, what are your thoughts? Well, you know, uh, it is kind of like children. Sure. And you have to watch what you say because yeah. otherwise you're going to get jealous when you say it. Right. Uh, but we also have a favorite child, be honest. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Jim's favorite is his grandchild. He passed up That's his kids. For that girl's yeah. sturdy. I've been rolling around, picking it up, moving over there, shoving it down the way, and I've just been really fascinated and intrigued by the way the whiskey has tasted over eight years. Yeah. I mean, because it is so variable, and I'm so excited about how that tastes now because it didn't always taste like that. Man, it was there was a time. Uh, you know, it's kind of like when you have a tire and you, and you run the, the tread all off of it, right? And then you just, you toss yep. it aside. And then one day you put a brand new tire on it. That's what it, this is to me. It's just like, it's a brand new whiskey. And I'm, I'm excited about that, but it's been eight years. Yeah. You know, and uh, I can't get too excited about it because we can't age everything at this point in time for eight years. Right. Uh, I'm really excited about the attention that the orange flint got considering it's only a year old. Right. That really says a lot to me about maybe what we can expect from it down the road. Yep. Because I mean, for somebody, I've got a one beside it, but there were several other people said, well, yeah, but I kind of, you know, whatever, but the eight year one out. So I think that in two or in eight years, my God, what's it going to be? And it may just swamp that eight year in three years. I don't right. know, but I'm kind of a sweet tooth person. When I first started distilling, I made white dog and it tastes not terrible, but doesn't taste, you know? Yeah. So I started mixing fruit with that. And I started with the cordials concept when I was, didn't have a license and stuff. And I really got into that. And I really like cordials. And I think our whole business concept is tends to forget cordials. Because I tell you what, walking in our front door, a lot of bourbon people, and they tend to be married to a sweet tooth person. <laughs> and, and that they carry the pocketbook. Yeah. A lot of times. So I get really excited when somebody gets really excited about a cordial that sat in the chair over there and wouldn't stand up and taste it. Right. It's exciting. It. Donna, it's yes, has never tried anything on any of her shows before. That was a first. Right. That was cool. I, I mean, if I'm, I can, I'm excited about that. I really like to finish the day with something like that, you know, and, and tasting whiskey during the day is not new for me. Right. It's not, you know, and so oh, yeah. at the end of the day, I've been known to go back there and I'm, Jessica probably doesn't know. Take a nip, I, sure. You know, I can <laughs> take a nip of that, and I can. Oh, yeah. It's just really nice. I, every time I show up, I can tell you're lit, there, Gary. Yeah, I'm kidding. Did you say you don't know? Did you, yeah. you say you're sneaking by aged Barry Barry, or what? What did you say? You're sneaking <laughs> <by>? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It would be difficult for me to pick one. I mean, but the Barrel Thirty, okay, uh, has got to be the best whiskey we taste tonight. All right, all right. I'm and, putting and you down for that. Be, the six year red has got to be second. I mean, in my opinion, I mean, and you guys have, have said that. And the fact that you gave the orange flint such a high rating, 
really excites me because I think there's some What's real the future hold? There. Yeah, yeah. But Gary, I'll say if we had a force rank it. That orange flint, you know, if everybody ranked it, man, I bet that it have been top three. So being oh, a yeah. year old, my God, that was fantastic for a year. Oh, yeah, exactly. That excites so, me. You you put that at, you know two three years you know down the road, and I can't imagine what it's going to be. But that to me, if, if we had a force rank it. I'd have to believe this in the top three of, of what we taste, which is amazing for a, a year old, you know, whiskey. Yeah. Going up against yeah. an eight year and a six year. I yeah. mean, that's, that's, yeah. that's really yeah. good. I want, I, I can't imagine what this would be like aged another year or two. This yeah, is I, can't, I can't yeah. wait. Gary, I'm, I'm I, one of the two ones. Two years. That, I'm, I'm one of the ones that was telling you, why in the hell did you want to barrel age it? Because I liked it when you let me try it when it was new make. Right. Yeah. I, I remember that daddy. Oh yeah. <laughs> I think you might even yeah, say, don't, don't barely age it, you'll fuck it up. <laughs> yeah. uh, sounds like Danny. Yeah, yeah, that does sound like Danny. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, probably was. Yeah. Yeah. So, our, our, you know, the final on the scoring looks like this. The, again, it's it's a little bit skewed because you can only vote for one. We forced everyone to pick their absolute favorite. So, again, if we did our normal ranking system, everything would have votes. Uh, you know, if, even if we said, give us your top two, I feel like we know that everything would get votes because Heidi's, her second one was the Honey Barrel. It didn't receive any votes, so that, that one came in last. And then we had a tie for, uh, you know, third and fourth place with the Orange Flint and the uh, Tawny Berry. Both had two votes, which was cool. And then that six-year-old Bloody uh, Butcher, man, that, that is some amazing stuff. I, I do love that. Um, you know, what a, what a whiskey that is. But that got five votes. And uh, doubled up on it, though, was the eight-year. Ten votes uh, went for that, which is a very cool thing. Gary, hopefully when that store opens up uh, on our grand opening, because I don't think we're going to last beyond our grand opening on that one with 30 bottles. Uh, hopefully we can have you out there and you can sign some sign those bottles for the folks as they buy them because that's some good stuff. Oh, we do that. You're not going to make it the opening with those bottles. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I, I don't know what our I don't know what our store policy is on presale. Jim and I haven't had that meeting yet, uh, but yeah, I've already got one guy wants to buy two, and I'm like, this is what it's going to cost. He's like, yeah, I know, fine, yeah, uh, I'll give you my credit card now, and I'm like, I don't think we're ready to do that yet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, I think. I we want to have it on the floor when we open that door. Right. That's the exciting thing. Is we're, yeah. we're a fledgling company, Steve. We we need to we need to do what we can to make money. I'm just saying. Right. Like, yeah. Okay. Gary could sign ears of corn for us to sell. That's fine too. Yeah. Yeah. He signed an ear of corn for me. So famous. I know that's a reference. Yeah. yeah. We can yeah. do that. Yeah. You know, this has been a great evening for us. I mean, I'm sure Jessica cannot say the same thing, but you know. You guys are very important, and uh, we deal with a bigger, wider, broad spectrum group of people who like whiskey, and, and they're quite variable. But in the front of that big crowd is a lead cow. You know, I, I grew up chasing cows on horseback, actually, but that lead cow is very important. And to me, the guys you bring, Steve, to this kind of event are the lead cow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and we need to know where that lead cow is going because the whole herd are going to follow. Yeah. And, and that's important, very important for us to know where the, where the, the herd's going. And the easiest way to know that is to know where the lead cow is going. And that, to me, is what this program is all about, is trying to figure out from you guys you know, what you like, what you anticipate, what turns you on, what you anticipate, and those kind of things are invaluable to us. Yeah. You know, it's a marketing concept that is very critical for anybody, particularly in the craft spirits business, which is so variable and, and so dispersed and, and disjointed and, and going in so many different directions, is trying to figure where the hell you guys are going to go that are buying the whiskey. You know, yeah. and, and and biggest of all is where are the guys that are going to pay 250 bucks for a bottle of whiskey? Where are they going to where are they going to shop tomorrow? Right. You see what I'm saying? And those are critical things. And these programs like this really help us to zone in and focus our efforts in a certain way. And I, I, Jessica, I think it tells us that uh, barrel aging is common in all of these high ranking things here. Yeah. No, I agree. I mean, it, it's really nice just to have an outside perspective because, you know, we're tasting these things all of the time. 
And sometimes I kind of get get um, in this mindset of, you know, tasting for this particular profile. And sometimes I go on this, maybe on something that's, you know, particularly unique in itself. And that, uh, you know, I don't want to say I fall into a rut because that's not what would have to be about, but you know, it's, it's, it's just nice getting that, getting Thanks that. Thanks you guys. Yeah. You made this thing easy. Yes. I mean, literally I just had to drive out there and just get everything packed up. I, all I had to do is write names on there and drop in the mail. So Really, uh, thank you for making this a, an easy and fun night and really appreciate it. So thanks for to Jessica for the job she did, putting all this together and doing a lot of the behind the scenes work. And of course, without a doubt, thanks to Mr. Gary Heingartner for making this whiskey and talking to us about it. Really appreciate it, my friend. Great stuff. Great stuff. I, my head's off to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, we'll say goodbye. I'll stick around if you got any questions, anything like that. Want to talk a little whiskey? I can do that. But we will say goodbye to our folks that are watching this at home. Take care, everybody. See ya. See ya. Bye. Good night, everyone. Good night. Cheers.